This screencast is going to help you understand what a thermochemical equation is, um, some rules and that apply to thermochemical equations, and what are some of the kind of math stoichiometry type problems that you can do with thermochemistry and um, the equations. All right. So the equation here you see on the screen says 2C2H4 plus 15O2 make 8CO2 and 10H2O. And when you do this reaction, you end up with a delta H of negative 5,314.6 kilojoules. Now, what is saying here is that when this reaction occurs, you have a negative 5,000 um, and change kilojoules of energy being given off. So because it's negative, um, this is a product, and we can treat it as such when we're doing stoichiometry. So just like when we're doing the ratios of 2 to 15 to 8 to 10, this, this value here now becomes part of the reaction. Just to remind you, an endothermic reaction, the delta H is going in, and it is positive, so going in. And an exothermic reaction, the um, energy is leaving, and this is negative. Now, if we go back to what I just said on the previous screen, when delta H is negative, we're going to consider this a product. And when delta H is positive, this is a reactant. Knowing what kind of sign and whether you're a reactant or a product will help you a whole bunch when you're solving problems in um, this chapter. All right, so our first rule for dealing with thermochemical equations says that reversing the reaction reverses the sign. Sometimes you're going to need to um, change the direction of the reaction, and you will have to then um, take into account how that changes the delta H. So if we are no longer going into the reaction, but rather coming out of the reaction, we have to change the sign. So if we were to rewrite this equation as CO2 makes C... And O2, our delta H, will now become positive, 393.5 kilojoules, okay? The only difference is that what was a product is now a reactant. So um, because our delta H here is negative and it was a product, it is now a reactant to match with our CO2. So remember, when you reverse the reaction, you reverse the sign, okay? You can use these reactions in regular stoichiometry. For instance, if we were saying that we have 5 grams of carbon and we wanted to know how much heat we were going to make, um, we could take, just like normal, we would take our 5 grams of carbon and we have to change it from grams of carbon into moles of carbon and it's one mole is 12 grams. and um, Whatever substances are in your reaction is what you're using. This one just happens to be carbon the element, so it's carbon the element here. Um, now, moles of carbon go on the bottom, and if we are trying to find our um, the amount of delta H that we actually use or create with our 5 grams, we're going to plug that number into our reaction and treat it just like we would another part of um, the stoichiometry. Now, in this equation here, our coefficient for carbon is 1. Um, had our coefficient been something else, we would have plugged in a 2 or whatever it is. And um, we don't actually use the sign here in the reaction because if, you have, um, if you're changing into grams or moles, you can't have a negative value. But in this case, we are going to plug in the value. And remember, the sign's just telling us the, um, if it's a product or reactant. So in this problem, we would take our 5 grams divided by the 12 times 393.5, and we would, get, we would get an answer of 163.996 uh, kilojoules, and it is going to be still negative because that is the, um, the heat is being released. That's what our negative is telling us. So we can do regular stoichiometry and just treat this um, delta H value as just another term in the chemical equation. 
Sometimes when we're working with thermochemical equations, we need to multiply them or divide them by a factor. Let's say in uh, the reaction that we were working with, we really needed to know what 2 carbon plus 2O2 making 2 CO2s would get us for delta H. Well, all you do is that you now multiply that by 2. So the delta H for twice that would be would be negative 787 kilojoules. So again, as you apply your factors to the reaction, you also apply your factor to the delta H. Here's a sample problem. I've given you the thermochemical equation at the top, and it says how many grams of water are consumed when 2,500 kilojoules are absorbed. Um, key thing here, it's asking you about water being consumed. Um, in the reaction as it's written, water is a product, so it's not being used. So they're telling you when they want it consumed that the reaction would be flipped. So what you need to do is you need to rewrite this reaction in reverse or change the sign. Uh, so you need to keep in mind that sometimes they use words that will tell you which direction the reaction is going, whether it's forward or backwards. So we're going to start with our 2,500 kilojoules of heat and we're going to convert that into grams of water. So kilojoules go on the bottom and we will then um, plug in our 1531 from the problem and we will relate this to water. So six moles of H2O on the top. Um, moles of H2O have to go on the bottom and we can then relate that to grams of H2O. Uh, the numbers will come from the periodic table. That's where I got the 32. I'm sorry, 32 is not correct. Uh, it is 18. And then I'm um, double-checking my units. I've got my kilojoules canceled, my moles of H2O canceled. I have my grams of H2O left. So now all I have to do is actual, actually do the math. The uh, math works out to be 176 um, grams of H2O that is um, consumed when you run this reaction. Now you would not put any kind of sign on your grams of H2O because having a negative amount just wouldn't make sense.